Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you watching on Facebook Live, I'm Alex Martins, the CEO of the Orlando Magic, and we would like to welcome you to the fabulous Advent Health Training Facility for this very special day. We'd like to welcome our entire Magic staff who is here, our season ticket holders in attendance, our corporate partners, and members of the media. This is an extremely exciting day in the history of the Orlando Magic. And we are excited to have members of our Orlando Magic ownership group that are here with us today. Our chairman, Dan DeVos, and his son, Cole. And Dick DeVos as well. Welcome you all. We're also excited to have our great partner from Kia Motors, Percy Vaughn, the director of the Southern Region of Operations from Kia America who we'll be seeing here shortly. It's an exciting time to be a Magic fan, and we've had an outstanding year here in Orlando, both on and off the court. We've witnessed our young team play hard, together, and for each other. They improved their record year over year by 12 wins, the best improvement in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. And of course, our year was also highlighted by opening this amazing facility with our partners from Advent Health, this Advent Health training facility. For the eighth straight year on the business side of our business, our great business team led the MBA in group sales for the eighth year in a row. And we also experienced four of the top five crowds in Amway Center and Orlando Magic history. We thank our fans for that. Also, our TV ratings were up 112%, and we topped the 10 million mark in social media followers, leading to a ninth place ranking in the entire NBA for our social media. And via the DeVos Family Foundation and the Orlando Magic Youth Foundation, we donated more than $3 million to a multitude of nonprofit organizations benefiting our Central Florida community. Today is another day for the history books. Today we celebrate Paulo Banquero. Selected as the number one pick in the 2022 NBA draft, Paulo played and started in 72 games this season, averaging a team high 20 points, 6.9 rebounds, and 3.7 assists per game. Paolo led all NBA rookies in scoring and minutes played, while also ranking among rookie leaders in rebounding, assists, free throw percentage, steals, and block shots. Paolo became just the sixth rookie in NBA history in the last 50 seasons to average 20 points, six rebounds, and three assists per game. He scored more than 20 points 40 times during the season and over 30 points six times this season, the most by any NBA rookie. The 40, 20 plus games were the second most by a rookie in team history and tied for the fifth most in NBA history for a rookie age 20 years or younger. Paolo was named the Kia MBA's Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month four consecutive months from December of 2022 through March and April of 2023, joining Shaquille O'Neal as the only players in franchise history to win the honor four straight times. Finally, Paolo joins Shaquille O'Neal and Mike Miller, his agent, who is with us here today, as the only Orlando Magic players to ever have been named NBA Rookie of the Year. Let's turn our attention to the screens for a brief video of Paolo's incredible rookie year. Oh, my God. 
His accomplishments on behalf of our partner Kia, we're proud to award Paolo Bancaro the NBA Rookie of the Year Award. Please, please join me in welcoming, representing Kia Motors America, Percy Vaughn, to present the 2022-2023 Kia Rookie of the Year to Paolo Bancaro. Paolo, on behalf of all of us at the Orlando Magic, congratulations. We'll now turn it over to the voice of the Orlando Magic, David Steele. David? All right. Thank you very much, Alex. Congratulations again, Paolo. Just a great day in Magic history and, you know, 34 years of Orlando Magic basketball. And this has only happened now the fourth time. And we got one gentleman sitting here, uh, Mike Miller, um, Shaq. This is the third time. Shaq in 93, Mike in 2001. Of course, Shaq got all first place votes, vote, votes except two, and the same number that, uh, that Paolo got here. Mike, you were very dominant, but not, not quite at that level. I looked it up, 75 first place votes, that's, that's a dominating vote, so uh, Paolo and Shaq a little, little higher, but uh, well done, well done, Paolo Bancaro. What are your impressions uh, of your first year? How much does this award mean to you? Uh, this award means a lot to me um, just because I think towards like the end of my high school career, I started to, you know, kind of put my eye on the NBA. And so I, I just made a lot of goals I wanted to achieve. And rookie year was one of them. And um, coming in, getting drafted, it was just kind of the first one I had, you know, on my, on my hit list was to get this award. Obviously, though, you know, I, I try not to think about it, just tried to, you know, play every game, you know, to win, uh, you know, put the team first, put winning first, and uh, everything I knew was going to take care of itself. So that was just my mentality heading in. Well, you did all of that and obviously a lot more. It started on uh, game number one. I mean, we played in Detroit. Um, he jumped over Corey Joseph, if you remember, and dunked the ball and just blew Jeff Turner and I away and everybody else that, that was watching the game. Um, just an incredible start. You had 27 points, nine rebounds, five assists in your first NBA game and then really didn't take the foot off the accelerator really the rest of the way. Describe that first year, that, that first game that you played in, in the NBA, and then what you took from that and moved through the season. Yeah. Well, that first game was just a lot of just raw emotion. Um, it's, it was one of those games where, you know, your mind's racing, heart's racing, and then the, the, the ball gets tipped and you just, your instincts take over. And so... That's really what happened in that game. Um, obviously, we wanted to get the win, um, but we just, I mean, it was a start for me, a start for the team. Um, and I think everything after that was just kind of on the up and up. 
And um, I mean, we started to experience some success um, individually and as a team. So I mean, it was a good start. Yes, it was. Jeff, you made the big call. Everything was on your shoulders. I know you've got a great staff that puts in a lot of work to come up with uh, your draft picks. But um, it was not a consensus that, you know, Paolo Bancaro was definitely the number one guy. What led you to the decision to take Paolo number one? Uh, well, David, before I get there, Mike Miller was the last rookie of the year for the Magic prior to today. And I just want to tip my hat to the guy that drafted him, the great John Gabriel, yes. who continues to help us as, as recently as this morning in our draft meeting. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely. Um, you know, my favorite thing about today, David, and ultimately why we selected Paolo, is the reason that we're all here today is because Paolo did it the right way. Paolo did not chase this award. It found him because everything that he just talked about, the DNA, the winning, the service to the team, his teammates know that's what he's about. And ultimately, the talent speaks for itself, but it's really way beyond that what's going to determine a player's career in this league. And all of those uh, ingredients, what Paolo's made up of, is why we selected him, and, and I believe why we're sitting here today. Yeah, clearly you made the, the right call, and Jamal, you, you've gotten to know this young man uh, very well now. You didn't know that much about him when he came in, as uh, none of us really did here in the organization, but what, uh, what did you learn about Paolo in terms of his work ethic, uh, his attention to detail, uh, for, for a 20-year-old, 19, 20-year-old rookie? Well, just his ability to focus on the little things. I know he talked about it yesterday a little bit. He's talked about it, the fundamentals that he's learned. Uh, found that out early in summer league. Uh, watching film with him, just paying attention to the little things of the game, the little things that help win games. That was the biggest thing, his, his ability to impact winning and wanting to impact winning, whatever that, mean, whatever that took. Uh, and he's carried that over to the team, carried that over with our guys. And the work that he's put in with you know, our coaches, you know, Jesse Mermis and Randy Gregory, they have worked him tirelessly and he continues to stay at it. So I think the more he does that, you know, he's just the sky's the limit. No question. Uh, JT and I talk on the air all the time about just how remarkably mature you were physically and uh, emotionally, uh, your personality, you handle your, yourself so well. Uh, really just mind blowing, Paolo. Where does that come from? I, I'm guessing that couple of folks and people here on the front row have a lot to do with it, but where, where does that confidence, that assuredness come from, from you? Yeah, like you said, definitely got to give credit to my parents. Uh, you know, I think them just, you know, being so tough on me all the time growing up, I think it just, you know, it helped me deal with everything else. You know, any other criticism or critique that I may receive, I knew that it wouldn't compare to my, to my parents. <laughs> uh, but I love them, uh, you know, my mom, especially being a basketball coach, you know, she held me to a high standard and didn't settle for anything less, didn't let me settle for anything less. And, uh, you know, it just taught me how to, you know, when no one's watching, you still got to work just as hard as you as you do when you're in the game. And there's hundreds of thousands of people watching. Um, and I think just my work ethic, um, just being self-motivated. Uh, wanting to be as, as good as I possibly can, not trying to, you know, not wanting to sell myself short. Um, obviously, just been blessed with God-given talent and ability, but, you know, it's a matter of what you were willing to do with that. And, um, you know, working every day, you know, trying to be the best player I can be. Um, that's what I love to do, and, you know, that's what I find fun. You know, that's my way of having fun is just working, pushing myself to new limits. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it comes kind of easy to me, though. You know, you just love the game, and, you have fun doing it, so it's never really hard. It's just, you know, seeing where else you can go. It's just part of your DNA. It's who you are. Um, in the off season, I imagine you, you probably, maybe you took a little time off. Did you take a little time off, a day or two, before you got back in the gym? Yeah. But I know you work awfully hard in the off season. What are the things that you'll be working on uh, prior to your second year in the NBA? Yeah, uh, I'll be spending time on a lot of things heading into, you know, year two. Um, Obviously, it was a great year, uh, got rookie of the year, but as Coach Mose knows, all my guys right there, Mike, you know, I, there's a thousand things that I'm, I want to work on and I'm willing to work on, whether it's, you know, shooting, um, you know, conditioning, getting in even better shape, uh, getting ready for next year, and then just watching more film, trying to become better, be, learn the game more, um, 
just do any little thing I can, eating better, um, you know, just experiencing my first year, you know, a lot of it was uh, testing, testing stuff out and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. So I feel like heading into next year, I'll have a solid idea of, you know, what I need to do and um, where I need to get better. Well, it's exciting to think about what's going to happen when this young guy gets a year, two, three, four under his belt and a just remarkable rookie year. Um, Jeff, um, Paolo embodies all those things that you talked about that you were looking for in the draft. How important is it, or how valuable maybe, is it to a basketball team when, when your best player, a, a young guy, has this much talent, this much desire, he sort of sets the tone in the locker room with his work ethic. How valuable is that? Well, it's, it's, it's extremely valuable. I mean, I think we have a lot of hard workers on this team, and it'll be a good uh, competition for, out, for them to outwork one another. And um, what Paolo has, I think, um, that's not very common for a player with his kind of accolades entering the league is Paolo wants the hard conversation and he wants the hard work and he wants the mirror, you know? Paolo wants the mirror. And so when you, when you have that approach and when you are willing to be coached and have a great coaching staff and a great performance staff, um, I think, you know, then you, then you talk about when you draft a player, how, what is his potential, and then the likelihood of realizing his potential. And when you combine those elements and you say, well, not only does Paolo have great potential, but because he wants those hard conversations, because he doesn't want to be kind of given the easy way out, then you say, like, we believe he's going to reach his potential. And now it's our job to put all the right people around him so he can get there. So that's your job, and coach, then you, you take this group and you try to mold it, and you did a great job this year uh, molding this young team, keeping them enthusiastic and playing through the season. You talked about leveling up this year. Um, tell us your thoughts on what this roster looks like from your standage point, vantage point inside the locker room. Well, we've talked about how together they are. Um, it is a tight-knit group. Uh, they push each other every single day. Um, but being most proud of how each one of them has grown in their own way. And the reason they grew, because the coaches pushed them and they allowed us to push them. And they never went too high, never got too low. Uh, early in the season, they just stayed the course. Uh, but the biggest thing with this team is the belief system. I think be, as you walk into the league and young guys, they get caught into, can they do it? Are they good enough? What does it take? And every single day, they found a belief system in how good we can be. Like texting with guys now, texting with Paulo now during the playoffs just realizing and seeing the level in which we can get to. And that's the biggest thing with this group, the belief system. And that's why they got better, because they were all willing to put the work in and push each other to get better every single day. Well, as you look to the future now, Jeff, I mean, your, your job, it's not over. Just you got the rookie of the year this year. You got two lottery picks this year. It's a big summer for you and the organization. Um, you've got cap flexibility. You've got the ability to maybe make a run at some free agents. Um, again, the two draft picks. Well, what are your plans for the summer? What does this summer look like for you? Work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great day. This is a great day, and we need to celebrate it accordingly. But after today, we, we put it in its place. And that's my favorite thing about Paolo is he's about the work. You know, this is a great day for Paolo. It's a great day for his family. And it's a great day for our team. And we're already, our, our scouts are all in town. We're already starting two-a-days for the week meetings. And, um, you know, it's about improving our team every possible way we can so that Paolo can reach his potential, all of our guys can, and our team fits and fights, as I always say, and we, we got to get better. And we have a lot of avenues to do that. Um, we have a lot of, obviously, um, information to gather before we understand how best to approach it. You know, where are we going to be drafting? How many picks are we going to have? What are other teams looking to do? So we'll um, get to that point shortly. Um, but right now, we are uh, about understanding the draft, trying to figure out um, the landscape, and really build our organization, the infrastructure of our organization, so that we can put Paolo and his teammates in the best way, to, best possible uh, uh, position to succeed. Paolo, this year you were in position right there until the last week of the season to, to get in that playoff tournament. I know you guys really wanted it badly. You worked hard for it. You never quit. You never gave up in that regard. Um, the crowds were great. I think Alex mentioned, what do we have, the five? Uh, 
four of the top five crowds in franchise history, which is really remarkable. I think, you know, in some part, certainly a testament to, uh, to what you brought the basketball team. But how important would it be for you to get with, the, with your teammates, your coaching staff, to get this franchise into the playoffs next year? I mean, that's, I think that's all we're worried about. Uh, I mean, just once the season ended, I mean, obviously it was, it was a, you know, a tough day or whatnot, um, all, the, all the season, you know, being over. But we all kind of looked at each other and kind of gave each other a look like, you know, we know, we know what's, what time it is. We know what has to happen now um, through this offseason, through this summer. And then leading up to next year, like, we just got to take everything to another level. Um, everyone, players, coaches, um, trainers, like, we just all got to come together even more. Uh, you know, I, I was texting some guys today just, you know, telling them, like, you know, enjoy the time, like, but let's try to link up and um, get some work in this summer because, you know, that's what's going to take for us to get there. Um, and then, I mean, just me being my first year, just watching the playoffs, like, how could you not want to be there? Um, you can just see the intensity, the difference in regular season to, to playoffs and, you know, how much more the games mean, you know, how much, you know, more intense the crowds are. Just everything's um, heightened during the playoffs. And, um, you know, I think the city deserves it. I know the guys and the, and the coaches here, we, I think we deserve it, you know, as long as we put the work in. And uh, we're obviously talented enough. You know, we got the pieces. You know, we got, we got more pieces that's, that's coming. So um, I think everyone's excited. And, you know, we're going to get there for sure. All right. It's an exciting time. That'll wrap up my segment of the program. Uh, I think we're going to take questions from the media. Is that right, Joel? You want to take it over from here? Sure. Um, so if the media has any questions, uh, if you could wait for a microphone and state your name and affiliation. Hello, Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. You're obviously very good at, at setting lofty goals and, and accomplishing them, whether it be the, being the number one overall pick or winning Rookie of the Year. What does that process look like for you as you're going about setting goals, and, and what's next up on this list? Yeah, I think in terms of setting goals, uh, you know, it's always fun to write down goals and fantasize about them, but at the end of the day, you got to, you know, get to work. And uh, so... I think next year is, is playoffs or bust for me, for everyone, uh, for the guys. I know, I know the way we've been talking to each other, man, like that's all we're worried about. So that's all I'm worried about. That's all the guys is, is focused on is, you know, trying to do whatever we can, to, you know, be in the best position come this time next year um, to be where we want to be and be in a seven game series. And uh, we know what it's going to take. It's not just going to happen. It's not just, we're not going to be able to coast through the season and, you know, let our talent win. You know, we're going to have to work every day. We're going to have to work during the off season when it's three months until the season starts, you're gonna have to be working. So uh, we're all excited though. Uh, Jamie Say, WKMG Channel 6 Pello. Just what has this community, the Orlando Magic fan base come to mean to you as you've gotten to know it better and you've kind of made it your home these last 10 months? Yeah, they've been, they've been really, really supportive and helped me a lot. Uh, coming across the country for me, um, was hard, especially being a pro. Um, it's a lot different than, than going to college and being away. You know, when you're in college, you're on the campus and, you know, you got people who can always watch out and kind of look out for you. You know, coming here, you're on your own. And, uh, you know, from the second I got drafted, um, I could just feel the love and the support, you know, from, from the city, from the organization, uh, from my teammates, you know, guys letting me know, like, if I ever need anything, you know, they got my back. And so, uh, I immediately felt that just the family, family environment here and uh, walking around the city, I mean, it's the same thing. It's just support, you know, people are so nice and so supportive and just always quick to let you know how much, you know, they appreciate you being here and, you know, what, what I'm able to do um, on the court and, you know, just how much they enjoy watching me. So uh, I look forward to being here for a very long time and uh, building a strong relationship, you know, with everyone in the city. Hello, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Jeff and David were talking about just the assets the franchise has now, cap space, um, you know, room to go get some free agents. I'm wondering, stars want to play with other stars. What did you learn about from Coach K about recruiting, and are you going to recruit <laughs> some other stars? Careful. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, Coach K, he taught me a lot of things, but he didn't teach me how to recruit, sadly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll leave that to, you know, the guys upstairs. Paolo, Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Um, 
was there a moment, uh, you know, whether it's early in the season, whether it's in the middle of the season, where you you felt like, I got this, I, I belong here, or, or even like this this is almost routine being uh, being the level that, that you were at? Yeah, uh, I would never say it became routine. Uh, you know, every game I had to lock in and be focused. Um, the NBA is hard. Um, and just being my first year, I don't think I was able to really ever relax. But, I mean, I think from, from the jump, start game one, I think I felt that I belonged and that, you know, I could be, be successful. Um, but throughout the season, it was a lot of ups and downs, uh, peaks and valleys. And I just give credit to, to Coach Mosley, my teammates, um, for, for sticking with me and, and trusting me. And when I was, was going through those tough times and tough stretches, you know, just pumping nothing but encouragement and, uh, you know, just supportive energy. And, uh, you know, we ended up getting through it. And, uh, you know, they never, they never wavered, so I appreciate it. Cody Taylor, USA Today, Ricky Wire. Uh, Coach, from the day he got here, Paolo, just where did you kind of see his growth and, and how he handled being, you know, at the top of every team scouting report? You know, it was interesting because obviously started the year off with injuries. Uh, and so he was running the point, essentially. And so watching his ability to adjust as the game went on, to see the game, to read the game, to facilitate, but not do it in a selfish way. Uh, he did it for whatever was necessary for the team. And then we talk about that's his character. He wants to do whatever it takes to win. And then as guys came back, he started to adjust. And in, the, in all that time, never wavered never wavered in his demeanor, never wavered in his work ethic. ethic. And so that's, such, that's a special quality to have, to be able to adjust to whatever's happening within a team and try to find a way to get the win no matter what happens. So that was from the beginning stages, and he's worked tirelessly since. Jeremy Brenner with the Magic Insider. Jeff, this question's for you. Now that you've drafted Paolo Bancara, probably one of your greatest finds in the draft, um, does that change your mindset going forward now that you've drafted someone of Paolo's caliber? To Does that change how you may draft future players and your scouting process? Uh, well, I mean, we're always trying to improve our process. And, you know, we have a lot of people at the table to help do that. Um, you know, we're big on systems and, and efficiency and how we can, you know, cull through a whole lot of information and come up with the truth. And... Um, so we're always looking to get better. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that it would change our draft process, but I will say that, you know, every time you add a significant player to a team, you know, it has an ecosystem that you're living within and a, a ripple effect. And so we, now we have to look at our team is different than it was last year. You know, we have different needs, um, et cetera. So we, we bake all of that into our conversations about the draft. And it's a lot of layers when you peel back the onions in these conversations. So, um, you know, we're always looking to get better. We'll, we'll do that regardless of who we draft and who we bring into the team. Um, but, you know, clearly um, it adds to the excitement of the team and the belief of our whole organization. And I always say the most important thing in an NBA organization is the belief of the players. You know, health and belief of the players. Without that, you have nothing. And so the most important thing to me is what Paolo just said. He's connecting with the guys already today. That's the most important thing that we have going on right now. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to do our work. We won't be outworked, and, and we'll continue to look at the best ways that we can improve ourselves, and we'll look at ourselves in the mirror where we can do better. Um, but, you know, our team is growing, and, and we're going to try to, you know, keep it on the right track so that these guys can keep the belief and, you know, um, know that they're in the right place. Mike Brodsky, Florida National News. Uh, Paolo, do you have a message for the Duke University Brotherhood? And also, are you currently actively pursuing an undergraduate degree? Oh, uh, I actually just got back from Durham a couple of days ago. I was just out there. Uh, so my message to them would be, uh, I just saw you guys. <laughs> 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 Seen everybody, said what's up, uh, went to the gym and everything. But, um, no, I'm, I need to start, you know, definitely got to get my school right. And that's what happens when you leave after one year. You know, you got to leave some stuff behind. But, you know, I'm definitely going to uh, hopefully pursue that one day. Paulo, in the back here, Adam Chow from Fox 35. I wonder, is being an all-star kind of the next step, the next goal for you, or is that something that you think about? A hundred percent. That's something that I've had written down for a while. Uh, 
obviously that's something that I'd love to do and uh, I'll be working towards, but obviously team success comes first and, you know, the more we win, the more everyone, you know, gets on and off the court. So that's, that's always going to be first. Any final questions of Philip? Philip Rossman Reich again from Orlando Magic Daily. You've talked about how uh, the playoffs are kind of the, the big focus for you and your teammates. Now that you've been through the NBA grind, what are you seeing or, or how are you watching the postseason differently than maybe you did before you got into the NBA, you know, back when you were, you know, maybe even a fan? And, and, and what does that tell you about where you need to grow your game next? Yeah. Um... No, you definitely see it through a different eye, I think, um, after playing your first year. Um, I know Coach showed us, you know, clips of postseason play throughout the season and just how much different it is. And then, you know, watching it live now, um, I mean, you can just you see it's, it's, it's almost night and day to me, um, just how much slower the game is in the playoffs. You know, there's a lot less transition. Um, the regular season, I feel like it's a lot of running and a lot of just kind of run and gun. But in the playoffs, man, it's just – slow, walk the ball up, um, using a lot of the shot clock, um, a lot of isolation is what I've been seeing. Um, but no, for me, watching and just seeing how, you know, I would have to adjust my game, I think the biggest thing is uh, being more efficient with, with movements. Um, just if you watch guys, you know, who are, who are all playing well right now, a lot of guys, they're scoring with, you know, one, two dribbles, um, catching shoots, um, just, just being as efficient as they can, I think, you know, that's, that's what a lot of guys are, are succeeding off of right now. And uh, that's just something that I want to get better at. Um, and also, you know, drawing fouls, getting to the foul line. Um, I think that's a good way to, you know, keep yourself in rhythm during a, a playoff series. And, you know, being able to produce for a seven game series, you're going to have to show up night in, night out. Um, so you can't be too high after a, a great game. You can't be too low after a bad game. You got to be able to bounce back because you got you to gotta game the, the following day. So. Um, but yeah, I've been locked in though. I've been watching it a lot, so it's exciting. Okay, thank you. Okay, can I just close with one thing? Yep. Very poised, very workmanlike young man over here, and there's a reason for that. And I just want to like introduce everybody to Coach Rhonda and Mario and Mia. Thank you guys for everything that you've done and for sure. the best. Great family. Thank you. Just close it by thanking everybody for being here today. Uh, media folks, we're going to have more availability with Paolo out in front of the Advent Health Center, right back here, back this way. And um, I think I speak for everybody in this room. We are thrilled about Paolo Bancaro being named Rookie of the Year, and we can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you, Paolo. Thank right.